Hey Posse YouTube and welcome to the fifth day of daily uploads if you missed day number four. A link to that will be in the top left hand corner of the video. Now, as you can see from the title, this is a battle against Sucker for Jessica. Now, before I get into talking about the team preview, um, Kashif decided to do a Final Frontier thing because he will be leaving Pokemon soon because he's, I believe he's getting married if I remember correctly. But um, yeah, he actually made a list full of battlers that he wanted to battle and I happened to be on that list. And I'm not going to lie, I did feel kind of honored seeing as I've been watching Kashif for about three years now. So to get a chance to battle battle him is awesome and it was actually an RU battle because he said he's battling people in their best tier and my best tier is RU so as you can see from the team preview he's got a lot of heavy hitters he's got the Gavantula, the Excavalier, the Entei and the Feraligator. The real only thing I'm going to be afraid of is going to be the Entei just because he can't 2 it KO my entire team so my main priority is going to try to get up the rocks and hope that he doesn't bring in Entei anytime soon but I guess you just have to wait and see how that turns out and let's get right into the battle so we're both actually going to be leading off with Kafagrigus and because we're both going to be fearing shadow balls from the opposing Kafagrigus. We're actually both going to make a double switch. He pulls a double switch out into the Needle Queen as I pull a double switch out into my Cryogonal. And because I did get the better end of the deal, the fact that he's either going to bring in for Alligator and Tarek Scavalier is very, very obvious. So I didn't make a double switch just because it was still early on in the battle on the off chance that maybe he did predict me to pull a double switch for some reason and just wanted to get up his rocks and I could get off a good chunk of damage on the Needle Queen. Unfortunately, that's not the case and he did switch in Excavalier and I completely forgot about the fact that Excavalier tend to carry Pursuit. Uh, luckily, because it, it is not stabbed, it is 40 base power, and it is not super effective, I will be able to live and still have a potential to rapid spin the rocks away later on in the battle if he does get them up. So, instead of going for the Will-O-Wisp, I actually thought he would bring in the Entei predicting that. That way, uh, I could go for the Nightshade and get off a good chunk of damage on it. But no, he does bring in the Karagono because... I mean, sorry. He does bring in the Needle Queen because this is a perfect opportunity moment to get up the Stealth Rocks. Uh, to limit my switching as I do just bring in my crow I'm going to predict that in the following turn I can either go for the toxic the ice beam or the rapid spin and I actually do go for the toxic I believe no no sorry I go for the ice beam in the following turn I go for the toxic now the reason I went for toxic was because um, I just wanted to get damage on whatever he decided to bring in even if you brought in the Entei um, the Thunderbolt for my Rotom is going to only do around 55% at minimum damage and 65% at max. So if I can knock down the Entei and just hope that he's in Scarf, then I don't have to worry about it as long as I can get a free switch out into my uh, Rotom. So my main priority is going to try to get up rocks and do as much damage to the Entei as possible to where I can bring in my Rotom and easily Oko him with the Thunderbolt. So I'll go for the Toxic the following turn knowing that he's going to go for the will o -Wisp, which I'm really not uh, too bothered by seeing as I do have Clefable on my team. So I can always just go for the Heal Bell and not worry about it as he's going to go for the Trick Room. and um, I I found that a bit odd that he was running Trick Room and will o -Wisp, but then I thought about it, he does have Excavalier on his team, so he's more than likely going to bring in Excavalier the following turn. So in return, I'm going to bring my own Excavalier when what I should have done was probably brought in my Kafagrigus, but then again, he could have brought in Entei. Well, then again, if you brought in Entei on Trick Room, I would still be faster than him, so... well. The only thing he could really bring in on my Kafagrigus would be his own Kafagrigus, which is toxic at this point. So bringing in my Excavalier was the better play in that situation, if you ask me. So he actually decides to go for the Iron Head. Not really too sure why. I mean, both Mega Horn and Iron Head are neutral or resisted, I believe. So Mega Horn you know, is the move I went for, as he went for Iron Head, obviously probably not wanting to risk the miss. As I'm going to go for another one, as he brings in the Nita Queen. And even though this is resisted, that still did a pretty good chunk of damage to it. So the following turn, I don't want to stay in and take a possible flamethrower or fire blast, so I'm actually going to bring in my Clefable. And if you're wondering why my Clefable is called Fuck You, I believe I was in a bad mood while, while I was making this team, so I just called my Clefable Fuck You. But yeah, anyways, I don't take that Cheer Force stabbed um, Earth Power as good as I hoped I would. Uh, luckily, I do take it um, relatively good enough to the point where I don't have to worry about him KOing me, which that sentence was very stupid because I did practically nothing, just just ignore that. Anyways, um, I'm going to go for Heal Bell. Now, the reason why I'm for Heal Bell was because on the off chance that I do need a death fight on my Cafable, I will still have my Cryogono to take hits from the Galvantula, and if I can get rid of the Cofagrigus, I can still rapid spin the rocks away. So he brings back in his own Cofagrigus, and in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking that this thing has rest. So... If he does have rest, I want to knock him down to a point where he's going to be forced to go for it because if he is carrying the rest, he's obviously not going to be carrying sleep powder because, I mean not sleep powder, but sleep talk because rest talk with will o and trick room would just be a little bit odd and that way I could get a free switch into my Rotom and get freely behind a substitute. So he unfortunately does end up missing the will o which in the long run of the battle, I'm not entirely too sure if it mattered or not. I mean, you'll see in the following plays as I'm going to be able to get out my rocks. So when the Ante comes in, it's going to be at around 75% HP. So with some recoil damage and allowing me to get a free switch out to my Rotom, Entei will no longer be a problem. So I'm going to go for the Roar just knowing that he is more than likely going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. That way I could get Rock's damage on whatever he decides to bring in. 
as I actually brought him out to the Galvantula and the following turn I'm actually going to go for the Ice Beam in. He ends up bringing in the Needle Queen. not entirely too sure why I guess just maybe as Death Fodder and here is where um, I actually thought I was running Speed EVs and my Needle Queen because I do have an EV Queen that has Speed EVs so I thought because of the Trick Room his Needle Queen was slower than me so he would obviously be faster than me than Trick Room but it turns out that it was just a speed tie win unless he's running like a minus speed nature or minus IVs in his Needle Queen but luckily because I do have a good investment into my special defense bulk I will be able to take one earth power and finish him off with the Ice Beam so at this point I was thinking that I could freely get on my Toxic Spikes and wear down his team but then I thought about it he does have the rocks up and I might not have a free opportunity to go for the Rapid Spin as he brings in the Gavantula so I'm just going to leave him my Needle Queen basically as Death Fodder and a this moment in time, I can either bring in my Excavalier or I can bring in my Cryogon. Now, now, bringing in my Excavalier could have been very, very risky, seeing as if he was Expert Belt with Hidden Power Fire, he would have easily been able to Oko me, but I guess that is not the case. And he actually does decide to switch out as I do go for the Pursuit and get rid of the... Um, Gavantula, unfortunately, this does mean he can get a free switch into his for alligator. And in the back of my mind, I was really scared about the fact that he would be carrying substitute. But if he was carrying sub, then that would have been his perfect opportune moment. But he does decide to just go for a dragon dance. And actually, dragon dance for alligator is a lot easier to deal with than sword dance for alligator, believe it or not. So the following turn, I don't see any uh, leftovers. Um, but then again, he could be life orb. So I'm just going to go for will wisp because on the off chance, if he is the lumberry set, I can burn it in the following turn, go for another one, and just rest up in nightshade accordingly. I'll rest up sleep time and that shit and all that sorry so sorry so he actually pulls a double switch out into not double switch he actually pulls a switch out into Entei which was very obvious but for alligator is such a big threat that even if he is dragon dance I still have to worry about it so I didn't want to risk anything and I just went straight for the will o -Wisp as he ends up uh, just going straight for the filibits on my switch out to Excavalier now what I should have known was possibly brought in my cryogonal uh, that way the um recoil damage from Flare Blitz would have been greater because I believe if I had done that then I wouldn't be forced to go for a substitute with my Rotom this turn because from the amount of HP that he's at he looks to be around 56-60% HP and unless I get maximum damage then I really have no potential chance to actually Oko in the Entei so I'm actually going to go for another substitute just to make him lose an extra 2-3% HP um, that way the following turn I can Elko him with the Thunderbolt, which really, uh, at this point, I know more than likely for Alligator is going to go for Aqua Jet because I have seen some for Alligators that do carry Dragon Dance and Aqua Jet. Although it is very rare, it's still a good possibility to carry that just for the priority. So I managed to knock out the Entei as he does bring in the for Alligator, and obviously I'm just thinking he's going to go for the Aqua Jet. But he actually turns out to not have it, and I'm going to be able to finish off the for Alligator with the Thunderbolt, which means his last is Cofagrigus and his last is Excavalier, which I can just Oko with the Shadow Ball and Oko with the Thunderbolt. So that's that's going to be the victory in my favor. Good game, Cash Shift. Although it was a bit of a roll time sweep near the end, it was still a very fun and good battle. And as I said, I do feel honored being part of your final frontier, man. Um, good luck to your future endeavors and your future battles that you have. And with that, guys, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to see more content, and expect a new video up tomorrow. So, yeah, guys. Uh, later.